In the second scene you were about to meet, Baron Attinghouse, just mentioned by Baron Stalbacher. The Over the centuries, a certain landed nobility had established itself in the Swiss cantons. But they were intensely nationalistic. They had fought to defend their rights. But now something new was facing them. The rise of the Habsburgs, who were using money to buy out the empire, which was in financial trouble. And so the question becomes, is it better to simply go along with the new order of things rather than to get yourself in trouble trying to fight back for justice? In the scene you're about to see, uh, Baron Attinghaus and his nephew, Yuli Rudenz, are debating precisely this question. Mocking out of distress, you follow after 
after giddy joys and court for princes' favors. All the while, thy fatherland bleeds from their heavy scourge. The land is sore oppressed. Wherefore, mine uncle? Who is it plunged the land into distress? Twould cost but a single easy word to instantly be free of this oppression and win the goodwill of the emperor. Woe unto those who seal the people's eyes that they resist what truly is the best. For their own selfish gain, they would prevent the cantons taking oath to Austria, as every country round about hath done. It suits them well to take their seats upon the master's bench with noblemen. They wish the emperor lord to have no lord at all. Oh, must I hear this from out thy very mouth? Was you who summoned me. Now let me finish. What person is it, uncle? You yourself play here. Have you no higher pride than to be canton magistrate and standard bearer and govern <coughs> here alongside these herdsmen? How? Is it not a far more glorious <coughs> choice to pay one's homage to our noble lord? Attach oneself unto his splendid camp. Then yours, to be the peer of your own servants, and share the judgment seat with these poor bumpkins? Oh, Yuli, Yuli, <clears throat> I discern them now the voices of seduction. They seize thine open ear. They fill thy heart with poison. Yes, I conceal it not. Deep in my soul, I'm pained by scorn of strangers who call us the barnyard barons. <laughs> Nor can I bear it while noble youths around me win high honors under Habsburg's banners. I can't bear to sit here idly on my heritage and see the springtime of my life depart in ordinary daily labor elsewhere. Great deeds are happening. <clears throat> A world of fame is brilliantly astir beyond these mountains. My helm and shield are rusting in the hall. The martial trumpeting of valiant tones, the herald's call that summons to the tourney, it does not penetrate these valleys. Not here I in these vales, but coward songs and cattle bells and endless clanging tones. Deluded boy, seduced by idle blow, despise thy land of earth. Thou art ashamed of pious customs of thy fathers. With burning tears, thou wilt so may be sick with longing for your own paternal mountains. <coughs> and for that melody, the cowherd dance, which now in proud disgust thou thus disdain. With painful longing will it torment thee when it awaits thee in the foreign lands. Oh, mighty is the urge of the fatherland. The false and alien world is not for thee. There in the haughty emperor's court, I will remain forever strange from thy true heart. That world it doth require other virtues than those which thou hast learned in these valleys. Go hither then, dispose of thy free soul, take land and thief, become a prince's lackey. Whence thou can be thine own lord and a prince of thine own heritage and free soil. Yuli, Yuli, stay amongst thine own. Go not to all off. Do not forsake the sacred cause of thy fatherland. I am the last one of my line. My name will end with me. There hang my helm and shield. These they will bury with me in the grave. And must I think, with my last dying breath, that thou but waitest for the closing of mine eyes, 
take thyself before this new feudal court and all the noble goods which I freely receive from God, then lease from Austria? It is in vain that we resist the king. The world belongs to him. His are the markets, his the courts, his the merchant roads, and even the horse of burden that passes on the Gotthard pays him toll. By his dominions, as within a net, are we enmeshed and circled round about. And will the empire fend for us? Can it defend itself against Austria's growing power? If God cannot help us, no emperor can. What good can be assigned the emperor's word when they, to meet both war and money needs, may pawn the cities that have fled beneath the eagle's shield and sell them to the empire? No, uncle. Tis a blessing and wise caution in grievous times like these of party strife to join oneself unto some mighty chief. The emperor's crown proceeds from line to line. It hath no memory for faithful service. To serve hereditary masters well means sowing seeds for future harvest. Art thou so clever? Will see more clearly than thine ancestors who battled for the precious gem of freedom with property and blood and hero strength? Sail down on to Lucerne, inquire there how Austria's rule doth lay upon the land. Soon they'll come up here to count our sheep and cows, to measure off our alpine lands, to ban the fowl and the large game animals in our free forest lands, to set up tolls at all our bridges and at all our gates, out of our poverty to pay for lands they purchase, with our blood to fund their wars. No! If we have to risk our blood thereon, so be it for us. We purchase liberty more cheaply than enslavement. What can we, shepherd folk, in the face of Albrecht's armies. Oh, learn to know the shepherd people, boy. <laughs> I know them. I have led them into battle. I have observed them fighting at Flavance. Just let them come up here to force a yoke on us that we are resolute we shall not bear. Oh, learn to feel the stock from which thou art. Cast not away the genuine pearl of thy true worth for idle show and hollow pomp. To be known as the head of a free people that but from love devotes itself to thee, that's loyal to thee both in strife and death, that be thy pride of this nobility big boast. The native bonds knit firmly to the fatherland, to the cherished, join thyself, hold fast to it with thy <coughs> entire heart. Here are the sturdy roots of all thy strength. There in the alien world thy stand its own, a slender weed that every storm may snap. Oh, come, thou hast not seen us for some time. Try it with us but for one day today. Go not to Altdorf, here it's thou, not today, but this one day. Bestow thee on thine own. I gave my word. Unhand me, I am bound. Thou art bound, oh yes indeed, unhappy one. Thou art, oh not by word and oath, tis through the 
the ropes of love that thou art thou. Conceal it as thy will. It is the lady, birth of unbruning, who draws you unto the castle. Feathers thee to the emperor's service, the knightly lady that thou hadst hoped to win by thy defection from thy land. <laughs> Be not deceived. They show the bride to thee but as a lure. Yet she's not granted to thine innocence. No more. I've heard enough. So fare you well. Stay, Yuli, stay! Rash boy, he's gone! I cannot hold him back nor rescue him. So has young Wolfenschiessen turned away from his own country. So will others follow. The alien magic tears the youth away by four aspiring far beyond these mountains. Oh, awful time when men and matter strange came here into these blessed, tranquil valleys to wreck the pious innocence of custom. The new is pressing on with might. The old, the worthy, is leaving now. Other times are coming. A different thinking generation lives. Oh, what do I hear? All of those are buried now with whom I shared my work and passed my life. Beneath the earth I lie, my time is He's blessed who will not live to see the doom. 